All right, so we're gonna do number 60 from your book. That looks, that looks challenging. Let's see what we can do with it. So, um, what's the inside function? It sort of looks like there's more than one. One thing that might help is if we write this integral. Like when you see a, a trig function with an exponent like that, why not just write that exponent you know, outside the function, which is what that really means. I've added these parentheses in here as they really should be for clarification. They're not in the original problem in the book. Okay, and now what do you think the inside function is? That's right, the inside function is cosine of two theta. Now, don't be bothered by the fact that there's an inside function inside the inside function, because when I do the derivative of cosine two theta, I'm gonna get negative two sine of two theta, and that sine of two theta is just right there. So I can just use, um, I can just use uh, cosine of two theta as my u. So we'll do u equals cosine of two theta. And so du equals negative two sine of two theta d theta. So negative one half du equals sine of two theta d theta. All right. So that means that my uh, sine of 2 theta, we're going to replace with negative 1 half du. So I'm going to start just like doing that and putting that negative 1 half out here. Um, I'm going to do integral. So I'm going to keep 0 to pi over 6, of course. So the alternative way to do this is to change these limits using this uh, over here. So I would have my limits go from cosine of 0 to cosine of pi over 3. Just change the limits here, and then you don't have to sub in the u at the end. I, I don't like to do it that way, but that's a matter of style. All right, so um, let's see. So then my cosine of 2 theta is going to be uh, just u. So I have u to the negative third power, because that's what it is. My sine of 2 theta d theta, that's just my du. And I put the negative 1 half out here. So the negative 1 half is out here for that negative 1 half du. And the sine 2 theta d theta matches this, so this is du. All right, so now I have negative 1 half. I'm ready to do the antiderivative now. So I'm going to do uh, u to the negative 2 over negative 2, raising the exponent 1, dividing by the new exponent, 0 to pi over 6 using the Reese cheater method. And then uh, I'll pull the 2 out. I think that'll make it easier. So then I'll have 1 fourth, um, the evaluation of u to the negative 2 from 0 to pi over 6, where the 0 to pi over 6 are limits on theta, not u. But now I'll just put the u back in, and I'll have 1 fourth of uh, cosine of 2 theta. Oh, look at that. Let's do that. Cosine of 2 theta. Yeah, to the negative 2 power from 0 to pi over 6. I don't know. Would it have been easier to change the limits? I don't know. Up to you. All right, so then I have 1 fourth of... All right, so uh, cosine of 2 theta is going to be cosine of pi over 3, and cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. So I'm going to have 1 half to the negative 2 and then minus, and then I'm going to put in the zero. So I have cosine of zero is one. One to the negative two is just one. All right. So then uh, I have one fourth times um, uh, one half to the negative two is two squared, which is four minus one, and it equals three fourths. Ta -da! There you go. All right, I was going to do another one, I think. Let's see if I can squeeze another one in here. And this will be the last one, and then I'll give you the homework. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, if only I had gotten ready for this, but I didn't. Uh, let's see. Number 66 we want to do? You want to do 66? Sure, let's do number 66. Okay. So this is textbook page 338, number 66. We're doing the integral zero to two. You know what, I'll do this one the like more orthodox way. I do it orthodox way. E to the x dx, just so you can see the different ways of doing it, three plus e to the x. Okay, so they didn't put the dx up here instead of out here. Why? I don't know, they just did. All right, so uh, a, a good rule, like it's not obvious what the inside function is here. So this is, that's why I picked this example. So a good rule of thumb, if it's not obvious what the inside function is, look for a denominator. The denominator is often a good pick for u, because then I can have, here's u, up here is clearly du, so I have du over u, and that's ln. Like you're gonna get used to seeing, oh, if I have du over u, that's ln. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. So we're gonna say u equals three plus e to the x. Uh, and then du equals e to the x. 
All right, now, the other thing I'm gonna do is, this time I'm gonna change the limits right away. So this is sort of the other way of doing it. So uh, to lay that out nicely, let's say, um, what is u of zero? That would be three plus e to the zero, which is four. What is u of two? That would be uh, three plus e squared, which let's not uh, simplify that, let's just leave it. All right, so then my integral here, so because uh, I should do this when I do the substitution for u. So as I do this substitution for u, I'll also substitute the limits. So now my limits are gonna be, the zero is gonna become a four, the two is gonna become three plus e squared, so you can just decide which way you like to do it. Um, and then I'm gonna have um, du over u, du over u, all right? Now that du over u, so when you see integral of du over u, that's the same as the integral of one over u du, so it's gonna be ln of absolute value of u. I've put a plus c because I wrote indefinite integrals here. So when you see du over u, that's just ln of absolute value. All right, so then I have, um, the ln of the absolute value of u from 4 to 3 plus e squared. All right. Now, um, because I changed the limits, I don't put the u back in. And I just say this is equal to ln of the absolute value of 3 plus e squared minus ln of the absolute value of 4. Then I say both of these are positive quantities, so this is just ln of 3 plus e squared minus ln of 4. Really no way to simplify that. So you could, by the way, go to decimal land at any point here, but I would just leave it like that. There you go. Okay, so what's your homework, you wonder? Well, I'll tell you. Your homework is Rogowski, page 334, which will be posted with this video, number 17 through 43 odd and this following random assortment, number 49, 51, 65, and 69. That's all in the Rogowski 334. And then also in your book, so textbook, um, page, uh, whatever page this is, 338. And uh, yeah, we're gonna do 57 through 65 odd. All right, there you go. That's the homework on this. Enjoy.